Good morning and welcome. My name is Brett Weber. I have the uh, pleasure and honor of getting to be the chair of the Social Work Department. Thank you for being here today. A storm like this would have shut down and paralyzed uh, many communities, but for us it was a relatively minor affair. In fact, when I went out to uh, shovel the walk this morning, I was, I was quite grateful. The wind had blown all of the snow into a single drift right on the property line between myself and my neighbor. I went out and cleared one drift and I got credit for clearing my walks and my neighbor's walks. It was a good morning. As you have already read in the program possibly, the BSSW program, the Bachelor of Science of Social Work program has a history dating back to 1905 when social work courses were first offered at the University of North Dakota. And the BSW degree was formally being offered in 1939 during the Great Depression. We were accredited by the Council on Social Work Education in 1974 when undergraduate accreditation first began and we have continued in high standing since. We added an online BSSW program in 2016. Congratulations to those of you who are involved in developing that. Let me also note that we are among the larger programs at the university, indeed, we have the third largest graduate program. Keep that in mind, please, yes. Um, and we have also been a national leader in distance education, going back to the time of IVN, the Interactive Video Networking. And our faculty were all familiar with Zoom long before the pandemic. Additionally, let me note that we have one of the most collegial and highly functioning programs on campus. And we quietly and humbly go about our work with little fanfare or recognition. Folks, and, and those of us who are joining us online, um, I'm so pleased and proud to get to be the chair of this department. Thanks for your can-do attitude and your industrious spirit during both the pandemic and accreditation. Everyone's going through the pandemic. We're also going through accreditation. Uh, You've made an honorous job, a pleasing and rewarding task. Thank you. So I guess I can wave to the camera. Is that how I say hello to the folks at home? Hello. Thank you. Um, the decision to hold this ceremony in a hybrid fashion, both live and over Zoom, was a difficult one. If I knew two months ago what I know today, I possibly would have made a very different decision. Ironically, I'm glad that I didn't know then what I know now, because I'm glad that we're all here together. Thanks for making the time to be here. Let me take a moment to thank Brent, Brent and Stephanie and Sarah. Uh, Brent and Stephanie, there's a great deal of work and planning that goes into uh, these kinds of graduation ceremonies. And let me also welcome Sarah uh, uh, here for her first uh, graduation ceremony at UND in her new role. These ceremonies are important. They mark a key milepost in the long career trajectory of today's graduates. They offer an opportunity to recognize and celebrate their achievement. For many, this might be your final graduation, though I hope you will consider our, graduate, our MSW program at UND. COVID has made life and the processes of teaching and learning extra challenging. This should not be glossed over. And at the same time, we should take a moment to recognize, honor, and to reflect upon the loss of over 2,000 fellow North Dakotans who have died from COVID, the 30,000 Canadians, the more than 800,000 in the US, and the more than 5.3 million people globally who have died, died from the disease in less than two years. Further, as social workers and the friends and family of social workers, we must recognize the disproportionate impact on oppressed and disadvantaged communities, especially tribal and res reservation communities who were proportionately the hardest hit by COVID of all populations in the United States. One of the things I've always enjoyed about these ceremonies was seeing the grandparents of the graduates. That has been less common during the pandemic. This is a little out of my wheelhouse, but I'm gonna ask you to stand for a moment and join me. 
Would you please stand? Thank you for allowing us all to be a part of the journey that today's graduates are on. And I mean that as faculty, family, friends, and as colleagues of those who are celebrating this milestone in their lifelong quest for knowledge. May their work soften the blows of the coming waves of COVID and may their practice, research, and contributions to policy help bring about an end to the devastating impacts of this disease. Amen. Thank you. Whew. Now, let us lay aside some of those, some of these less joyous thoughts and, and let us focus on why we're here today. I'm gonna to ask you to imagine the future of these graduates in terms of some sort of visible measurement, maybe a cup of sugar, or at this time of year, perhaps we can think of different sizes of boxes of gifts. Now imagine how many times a day they will contribute, these individuals here before us, how many times a day they will contribute to the future happiness and well being of individuals, families, communities, and our larger society. In a single day, it's easy to imagine an impressive collection of these boxes of various sizes, each containing a variety of gifts. Now, multiply their compassion and love, the compassion and love that you know is in each of them, their love for one another, for you, for all people everywhere. And now imagine, now I'm starting to sound like John Lennon, imagine all of the social workers, it's not that hard to do, and imagine, all of the number of boxes by the end of their work week. Now multiply those boxes, those boxes of gifts by the number of social work graduates here celebrating today and the number of years their professional practice and their personal care. And it's easy to quickly see a treasure of their work that will be larger even than all of the buildings on this beautiful campus. And that's part of what we're here to celebrate today. So thanks, thanks for joining us today in our celebration. With that, let me introduce the, the department's program directors. Um, we have Professor uh, Isaac Kakari, our MSW program director. Um, uh, Professor Bruce Reeves, our field director. Uh, Professor uh, Stephanie Homestad, uh, our distance director. And uh, with that, Professor Barbara Kitko, our undergraduate director, and with that, I'll, I'll hand things off to Barb. Well, it's a good, can you hear me? It's a good thing uh, we didn't have this mic on that because the height difference, I know Fackler, Brett had brought up a stool so I could stand on it so you could all see me. So um, I'm thankful it's, it's a movable mic, so. Thank you. Um, welcome. Uh, as Thank you, Dr. Weber, um, and welcome. Good morning. This is the Department of Social Work's pinning ceremony for our fall 2021 graduates. Um, as uh, Professor Weber said, I'm the undergraduate program, uh, program director. Our mission of the Department of Social Work is to provide students with knowledge, values, and skills for practice. And I want to congratulate our graduates as you have completed and earned your place in this noble profession. We often talk about the pinning ceremonies, um, pinning and commencement ceremonies as our faculty payday. It's when we get to launch you, graduates, new social workers into the profession. You're entering this next stage of your journey in the social work profession. This is really a proud moment for us, as well as all of those who have supported you in your undergraduate education. So for the graduates, I'd like you to turn around and um, take a moment to acknowledge those who are behind you or those online that have supported you. I'm gonna give you a minute to do that.
this is an exciting time in the social work profession as it is growing. Social workers are the largest mental health providers and not just clinicians across the country, across the nation, but also globally. Um, you're entering the profession at a difficult time, which presents its own unique set of challenges and opportunities. As you are fully aware, the social work profession calls all of us to roll with ambivalence. And you certainly have shown your ability to do this during these last two years. For many of you, you transitioned online, your campus students transitioned to online, and for our online students, they have their own set of unique challenges. So, um, welcome. This pandemic, as Dr. Weber said, has um, presented some unique um, circumstances for us. So, uh, each, uh, each cohort, our distance online program and our campus program nominee and select a student to speak on behalf of their cohort. And our first speaker is from the campus program. It is Kelby Goulet. So I invite Kelby to come up and Kelby Goulet Schneider, I'd like her to come up and, and uh, take a couple moments to share some of her wisdom. Okay, can you guys all hear me? Sort of. Okay, I'll try to talk really loud. Um, hello, everybody, and thank you all for coming out here to celebrate on such a cold North Dakota morning, despite the weather. Um, and thank you to everybody that took the time to join online. Um, my name is Kelby Snyder, and I have had I have the absolute honor of speaking on behalf of the campus graduates today. First, I want to thank the time to recognize the social work department and the faculty for not only putting on this event for us today, but for all that you guys have done to, to teach us, to guide us, and to build us up these past few years. I want you all to know that your time and your energy has not been wasted and your words of wisdom have not fallen on deaf ears. Your time has been poured out on each of the individuals here today and those joining online. All of us who have dedicated our time, energy, and our lives to the pursuit of social work. Now, I want to take the time to thank my peers for their companionship and encouragement through this crazy undergraduate journey so far. Um, and I want you guys to look around at all the people behind you and around you that are here to support you and celebrate you and your achievements so far, because it's well deserved, you guys. Congratulations. Um, today, we're celebrating our achievements as the next generation of social workers. Social work is such a special work of field or a special field. Um, and it's special to each of us for so many different reasons. That's the beauty of social work. It's remarkably diverse and opens so many different doors of opportunity. Social workers are unique in the way that we see the world. We are kind of the jack of all trades, being able to play a role in education, healthcare, business, law, policy. This semester, we all completed our internships of 450 or more hours in so many different places. Whether that was one-on-one -on -one leading groups or working with a team, our cohort was placed in hospitals, nursing homes, schools, and agencies throughout the community and surrounding cities, providing mental health care, crisis support, counseling, and connections to valuable resources for basics such as food, shelter, and clothing. I really like to think that this goes to show that social work is valuable on all levels, on the micro level with individuals and families, on the meso level with communities and organizations, and on the macro level with law and policy. While I'm taking, when talking with one of my peers, she told me that social work stands out to her because of how broad it is. We can do so many different things to help so many different people with so many diverse backgrounds and experiences. Another peer contributed to this saying that we have such a broad array of knowledge. Um, and from that, that ranges from psychology to sociology, policy, and history. It's applicable to everyday life. And it's just maybe a better person in general. 
And I don't know about all of you guys, but that's been really true for me as I've studied social work at UND and lived out the core of what social work is in my field internship. I've grown in ways I didn't know that I needed to and I've become a stronger person because of it. So that's what social work is. It's broad and it's narrow, and I really like to think that it's kind of precision guesswork, really. Um, it's, it's promoting peace while fighting for justice, and it challenges you to be more than you ever thought you could be. Social work is also relevant. Like the rest of you and my peers, during my internship, I saw the need for service, social justice, dignity and worth of a person, importance of human relationships, integrity and competence. We all have reasons why social work is special to us. One of my colleagues shared that she chose social work because its philosophy follows looking at the whole person and their environment, not just the choices they may be making. Social work looks at the why. Another woman in my cohort shared that she chose social work because she loves that we utilize a strength-based perspective. And she loves that we get to empower individuals. She says she loves the client social work relationship we get to build as well. And this is so true. Again and again, we have seen in our time at UND and time in our field that we are creatures of community and creatures of relationships. That's why it's so important to have social workers to help us build those communities and those relationships, no matter where we are starting at or what we're starting with. One of my peers shared something with me that I absolutely loved. She shared that social work field provides the opportunity for mutual learning between the social worker and the client. And that mutual learning piece to me, I think is so humbling and so important. The amount that I've learned from these amazing graduates here today is immeasurable and priceless. Listening to my colleagues talk about what they have learned, hearing about their experiences and watching how they interact with people has taught me more than I can express. I've seen all of these individuals before me put in the work to learn about the pain, the hurt, and the crooked in the world, and then go beyond that to do something about it. I have seen this cohort get an education from the professors at UND on how to reach people, build rapport, and then provide evidence-based services. And from there, we've gone forward into a field where we challenged where we're challenged to apply classroom material to real world situations with real people. And during that time, we had periodic pockets of time that we got to spend together back on campus on seminar, where we shared our extremely different stories, um, filled with both our trials and our victories with one another over breakfast and, com and coffee, all in good company. And that is where I really think I saw what social work is at its finest. There I was in a room filled with strikingly different people with contrasting passions and unique skill sets, some serving children, some teens, some adults, and some the elderly, some serving the homeless, the mentally ill, the hopeless, the underserved, and the voiceless. We all had different visions, and yet when I looked around, we all were complementing and completing one another with the same goal. We were there to utilize our differences, those passions, those perspectives, those unique skill sets, and even our personal weaknesses that we possess to come alongside and build up fellow human beings. That is what social work is, and I was awestruck to be surrounded by that in such a time as we're living in right now. And that's what excites me as we close this chapter at UND, is that we all have such rich experience behind us, such motivation within us, and with only the future ahead of us, let's go out there and take it. Thank you. Thank you, Kelby. All right, our next speaker it was chosen from the distance cohort, and she will be joining us online, Gabrielle Train Pines. Hi, can everyone hear me? Okay, um, so I apologize that I'm not able to be there in person, unfortunately, as Oftentimes, the weather <laughs> just did not uh, cooperate today, but um, I'm happy that I'm able to still give this via Zoom. 
I think we can all say how lucky we are that this has been an option um, and one of the more positive things to come out of COVID. <laughs> um, so yeah, hello everyone. Um, I wanted to congratulate, congratulate everyone um, on their accomplishments today. My name is Gabrielle. Um, I'm a part of the online or distance program through UND. Um, I wanted to start by thanking UND for the opportunity to be a part of the program virtually. Um, without this, I know for many of us, it might not be an option for us to live out our dream of being a social worker. So I am grateful for the opportunity. Um, I wanna congratulate again, everyone on their well-deserved, um, I guess, moment today. Um, the hard work that we've all put in will definitely follow us throughout our careers. And thanks to the faculty, we will be the next generation of social workers. Um, so when I was asked to speak to everyone here about what it means to graduate with a social work degree, um, for me, it's kind of emotional. Um, when I'm thinking about what I might say, a few things came to mind. Uh, so whenever I tell someone that my area of study is social work, I get similar remarks uh, from most people. To start out, people usually say, you know you're not gonna get rich being a social worker, which I think we all know is very true. Um, and then people go in to say that this is a really hard field and the things you're gonna see are gonna be challenging. Um, and lastly, people wanna know why. Why did we choose to go into this field? Um, so I've thought about it a lot and with the first two things being mostly true, why did I choose this? Why did we all choose this as our career paths? I think that I can speak for most of us when I say um, that we have stories. Um, the stories that have helped shape us in the who we are today. For many of us, I know myself included, that story has parts that others would say are challenging, um, that had struggles and obstacles, and oftentimes that had heartaches. I used to think of my story as just that and thought that doing this job, I would be able to allow people from, to stop having those struggles and having those heartaches. Throughout my time at UND, I've come to realize it's quite the opposite. The stories of each of us is one of resilience. It's one of overcoming obstacles. It is a story filled with moments that we found our inner strengths and persevered through what might have been for some of us the darkest times in our lives. This is my why. When people ask me why I want to do this job, this is it. When we leave here today and go to work in our chosen area of expertise, we won't stop families from experiencing heartaches and we won't stop clients from struggling with their inner demons. We won't stop children from experiencing neglect. Rather, we will support them. We will help lift them up and find their voices to be heard. We will help them realize that through all the challenges and all the obstacles they are facing, that they are strong enough to overcome them. We will be there to help others help themselves in their darkest times, to recognize their self-worth and to know that they can seed with whatever their goals are in life. I encourage you as we leave here today to remember what your why is. Remember that it is about finding resilience and strength in people that we serve where others may not see any. It is about celebrating victories, no matter the size. It is about changing someone's story, or is not about changing someone's story, rather about finding those strengths and victories in that story. This job is hard. I think we all know that. The things we will see will be hard and we alone will not change someone's life but rather we will help those people realize the potential they have to change their own lives. Again, I thank everyone for their hard work and dedication, both students and faculty. It takes a village and we would not be here without each other. As we leave and go to work, 
I wish you all the best and remember what your why is behind you choosing this program and let that follow you throughout your career. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Gabrielle. Um, our faculty speaker who um, is going to come up and speak has taught many, if not all of you, either in the HAPS program or the distance program. So please welcome Craig Burns, who's going to share some of his doesn't count towards my time, does it? No. Okay, so amazing, amazing, amazing. So I tend to pontificate if you've had me in class, so let's get right to it. Um, but before we get into it and start burning some lean tissue, um, I want to congratulate each of you and you um, for arriving at this pivotal moment in your social work journey. You've all worked hard to get here. Um, you've learned a lot about yourselves and about your world. Perhaps you've questioned some of your fundamental beliefs and expanded your worldview. And I just want to tell you it was an honor and a privilege to be able to accompany so many of you um, on this part of your journey. So the National Association of Social Workers, um, our professional uh, organization recently announced the theme of their Social Work Month 2022, which is at the time is right for social work. So you might be thinking, wasn't well, the time always right for social work? Hasn't it always been right for social work? And that's true. But why now? Why is now a particularly important time for social work and to be a social worker? So here's a short list of some things as we come to the end of 2021 that you'll be facing as you head out into the, into the wild. So we started the year with an attempted coup. We're entering the third year of a global pandemic. After 20 years, we were defeated by the Taliban in Afghanistan, which has particular meaning for me. Um, in 2004, I was in Kandahar while we counted the votes in the stadium, the same stadium where the Taliban uh, state had public executions. And in 2005, my team and I were in Kabul for the inauguration of uh, Karzai, the first president. So there's worsening conflicts around the world that have continued to exacerbate uh, forcible displacement, where at least 182.4 million people are forcibly displaced, with 43%, 42%, or 35 million of those are children under the age of 18. We see human beings around the world flee violence, natural disaster, and oppression, seeking refuge in the U.S., only to continue being turned away throughout 2021. Record numbers of overdoses and suicides increasing year after year. In echoes of the Cold War, there's growing nuclear proliferation, unprecedented defense budget in the US uh, approaching $1 trillion, and rising tensions with China and Russia. Supply chains continue to be strained by multiple stressors, resulting in global shortages of goods and rising inflation. Islands and low-lying nations continue to be threatened by rising seas, king tides, and increasingly powerful typhoons and hurricanes. Unprecedented changes in climate conditions have wreaked havoc on global governments, the environment, and the economy. So, and these are just the things I thought of in the shower this morning. So, you may be wondering if you have any class, 
or you may be wondering why, so with all this, why is now the time to be a social worker? It's overwhelming? Yes. What can I do? I'm just one person. Yes. However, as we've heard, we work together. You might be thinking, is this Professor B doing one of his? I remember this one time, man. right? Uh, but we are facing unprecedented times. We have seemingly unending challenges, one after another after another, and there doesn't seem to be much respite for any of us. We're exhausted. You're exhausted. Most of us are just tired. And so you're taking all of this on in this time. The future's uncertain, and many of the challenges seem as surmountable. However, social workers, you, me, all of us, we're uniquely tra trained and prepared to face these challenges. On a daily basis, we work alongside our clients, individuals, families, communities, and we guide them in helping them to develop their strengths and the capacity to overcome what seem to be insurmountable obstacles to them. If we can do it for one, if we work together, we can do it for all. It's merely a question of scale. So don't get trapped in the faults that uh, division of micro meso macro. Western thought, we love to label this, categorize, and create hierarchies. That's what the system does. But by now, you've had me in communities, you should know better. Our clients live in a vibrant, dynamic web of interconnected relationships, like Kepler's music of the spheres. Each of us, client or social worker, is caught up in the celestial music of life. You wonder why you do so many group projects? Well, it's to help you prepare to work together. The social and social work does not just apply to the larger society, it applies to the professional relationships, the collegiality, the work togetherness, we need to incubate if we are going to make real, lasting, sustainable change and progress. The focus, the center of our profession, is improving the quality of life of the individual human being. Every policy, every intervention comes back to this. How, do we, how does what we do affect the individual? How does it provide dignity, self-determination, health, safety, equity, and equality to each of the nearly 8 million people on this planet. It's no small task, but I strongly believe and firmly believe that you all and we all are up to it. If I didn't believe that, I'd be sitting on a beach in old Mexico listening to the waves come into the shore. We'll see some of you in our MSW program, right? Um, and we'll encounter some of you in the field. You may be taking a break for a few years or you may be done with school for now. But listen well, you're not done learning. You have chosen a profession as alive and dynamic as the people with whom we work. You must always be curious. You must always be learning. You must always, always, always be increasing your knowledge of the human condition of the world, of the people in it, and the ways in which we are born, live, love, and die. It's all under your purview. It's all our responsibility. We can't do it alone, but we sure can do it together. This part of your journey may be concluded, so celebrate your accomplishments. Take some time, but not too much time. Take some deep breaths, rediscover your energy, drive, and passion, and get ready. Grab your gear, the tools you've honed in your courses, and get ready for the next leg of your journey. I cannot promise it will be easy. In fact, it's going to be really, really hard. But if we travel together, it will be rewarding, and it'll be fun along the way. We know what we need to do. We know how to do it. It's far past the time to move from knowing to doing. And I'll leave you with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. The time is always right to do what is right. Thank you.
Did you make the time limit? Oh, okay. Thank you, Craig. Um, he inspires me. Um, when we talk about global issues and, and, and how they uh, come down at a local level. Uh, so that micro meso macro. All right, so we are going to move on to the actual pinning ceremony. This ceremony is in honor of the late Dr. Myrna Hagan, who was a social work educator at UND for over 40 years. Myrna was dedicated to all of our students, but particularly our bachelor's level students. Um, this is an informal ceremony, so when your graduate um, comes is called up, you can absolutely come up, take pictures, we can pause, um, we, we invite you to do that. So um, what, what will happen is uh, each graduate will be announced, their research topic and their field, the place, their field placement where they did their internship, and their, and their advisor's name. For those faculty and students attending online, we'll have you turn on your camera when your name is called, and um, if and the advisor will also pin, pin them on and pin our virtual people online. So, uh, let's see what else. Uh, students will receive a, a flyer with the ABCs of social work that was put together by Dr. Haga, and, and a pin. So. We are gonna, I'm gonna have the faculty um, come up and be at the bottom of the steps. So students will come up on this side, they'll walk across and their advisor will meet them up here to grab their pen and, and the flyer. All right, our first student is Skylar Gerdahl. She was at St. Michael's Catholic Church her research topic was benefits of service an animals, and Angie Muse is her advisor. Hi, Skylar. I'm proud of you. Good work. Thank you. <laughs> Our next student is Jill Dornbach. She was at Turtle Mountain Tribal Child Welfare and Family Services. Her research topic was Tribal Child Welfare and Family Services Sources of, for Funding, and Stephanie Homestead was her advisor. The next graduate is Emily Faust. She was at Rural Resource Victim Services and Child Advocacy Center. Her research topic was forensic interviewing, and Kelly Gast is her advisor. Congrats, Emily. Good to go, Emily. Briar Hagen is our next graduate. She was at Centennial Area Learning Center. Her research topic was comprehensive sex education versus absence-only educational outcomes. Uh, Karen Lee Barkville is her advisor. <laughs> All right, Kelby Goulet Schneider is our next graduate. She was at Aluma. Her research topic was adolescent suicide, and Karen Lee Barkdahl is her advisor. Congratulations. Andrea Hansen is our next graduate, and she was at Community Options. Her seminar research topic was long-term impact of ACEs on mental health, and Kelly Gast is her advisor. Thank you.
Mercedes Jorgensen was at North, Northland Rescue Mission. Her research topic was Housing First Approach, and Craig Burns is her advisor. Quinn Kuchar is our next graduate. She was at Dakota Prairie High School. Human trafficking and the effects of, on mental health was her topic, research topic, and Kelly Gast was her advisor. Rain Masca is the next graduate. She was at Aluma. Her research topic was suicide and, and patient rights, ethical, legal responsibilities to clients, and Karen Lee Barto is her advisor. <laughs> Heidi Mo was at Perm Health. Her research topic was how was the COVID pan COVID-19 pandemic impact skilled nursing facilities and bed availabilities, and Stephanie Homestead was her advisor. Our next graduate is Taylor O'Hare. She was at CVIC. Her research topic was family violence, and I was her advisor. Our next graduate is Gretchen Osweiler. She was at Salvation Army. The benefits of equine assisted therapy was her topic, and I am her advisor. Cassidy Parkinson is the next graduate. She was at U Utah Department of Children and Family Services. Her research topic was policy revisions, revising policies to fit with the times. Craig Burns was her advisor. <laughs> Bethany Presley is our next graduate. Her research or her field placement was safe alternatives for abused families. Her research topic was effects of domestic violence on children. And Shanna Urban is her advisor. Holy hey, congratulations, Bethany. Kaylee Roskins is our next graduate. She was at Eventide Senior Living. Her research topic was transracial adoption and identity, and Karen Lee Markdell is her advisor. <laughs> Clarissa Simonson is our next graduate. She was at Community Behavioral Health Hospital. Her research topic was Impact of Mental Illness Stigma, and Shanna Urban is her advisor. Congratulations, Clarissa. All right. Callie Smith is our next graduate. She was at Spectre Health. Her research topic was harm reduction strategies and outcomes, and Karen Lee Bartell is her advisor. I'm 
Melissa Stute is our next graduate, and she was at North Dakota Youth Correction, Correctional Center. Her research topic is, should juveniles with behavior disorders end up in handcuffs? And Craig Burns is her advisor. Congratulations, Melissa. Um, our last graduate is Gabrielle Tran Pines. She was at Friends of the Children. Her research topic was family preservation in tribal communities, and Angie Muse is her advisor. Congratulations, Gabby. Congratulations, Gabby. So I wanted to take another moment to just congratulate the graduates, and um, let's all give them appreciation for this job that they've done. So Okay, so I'm going to have the faculty sit down for a minute, and I just have a couple closing comments, and not very many really, I, I promise. Um, you are leaving UND with a toolbox. You've earned it. It's called an education. It's your time now to go out and be change agents. In this profession, we serve clients often in their darkest moments. Keep in mind what an honor and a privilege it is to walk with the people that we serve, whether it be micro, macro, or meso level. Um, students who I've taught, and many of you I have, uh, know how much I love quotes. And you all know how much I love Dr. Brene Brown, who is a social science researcher with a PhD in social work. She um, states, this is one of her quotes, integrity is choosing courage over comfort, choosing what is right over what is fun, fast, and easy and choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. What a tall order we have been tasked with. However, I know that you are all up for the opportunity to go out and live with integrity as our code of ethics calls us to do. Welcome to the profession, colleagues. Congratulations on this wonderful accomplishment. <laughs>